Hi, in this slide I want to talk about if you were king for a day and running a distribution center, profit center, or chain, and you could, you know, creatively sort of turn the cranks, the controls of your, your business environment to in introduce a certain amount of creative tension to try to get people to uh, get on the path of mastery and move along and improve service value metrics and so forth. Uh, what 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 what's the sense of creative tension? And so this is another uh, kind of a, a a model that I borrowed from the web. And uh, at this one, it's pretty easy. This is how we're doing, and so everybody's doing what they're doing without really thinking about it. We're just a bundle of habits, for better or worse. Uh, you know, we're getting by. Uh, we're not making great money, but you know, we're content with what we're doing. At least at the top of the organization, I don't think that the bottom eighty percent are happy with uh, the total comp they're getting or necessarily the job security or job pride or job growth that they have. Uh, they're certainly not engaged. They need to be re-engaged. So that uh, would suggest that things are not as good as they, they, they might be. But again, you know, at the top, maybe we're in denial and it seems like there's at least a false sense of harmony. Everybody is doing what they should do and getting along. Surfs are sucking up to the bosses, that kind of stuff. So here we are just doing what we're doing. Now, if we decide that we want to have some ambition and we want to grow service value to feed all four stakeholder groups premium compensation uh, streams over the years to come, uh, how do we expose gaps? So uh, in this particular great thing, we've said, well, let's get paid for service value. And that's a good focal question, but we find that through line item profit analytics and doing uh, customer and item profitability ranking reports, et cetera, that there are huge cross subsidies in the business, which ask questions of why are the super winners that way and the super losers that way, and what can we do to transform losers into winners and, 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 and do the super winners three times better kind of thing. And so we start to uh, put different numbers out there and create, in a sense, gaps that have to be closed. And because we put everybody on a team, we tie everybody into the same bottom line, you know, boat, uh, and we start to publish praising statements, what we're doing is putting a lot of pressure on everybody to get on the path, to improve what they're doing, be part of the solution, not let other people down, not let yourself down. And if you, if you can't, you know, you can't do it, uh, you know, and, and stay with the program, then you're going to enter a lot of pressure to leave and maybe you'll even be uh, dismissed. You'll be, you know, you'll be judiciously and fairly terminated. Um, now, if we create an optimum amount of tension, uh, that would suggest that 60, 70, 80% of the, the adoption curve of, of stress management or doubting would be able to get with the program. But there might be, you know, one out of 10, one out of 20 who just isn't doing it or can't do it or won't do it fast enough. Uh, and there are different kinds of people. There could be people who literally are miscast. They, we hired a round peg for a square, a square space. Uh, or we took somebody who was really good at what they were doing and promoted them to the next level, which turned out to be their level of incompetence because they were really more of a, a, a rote learner as opposed to a learning how to learn learner. And when we promote them to the next level, they just structurally couldn't figure out how to, to step it up. Now we have a problem. We're paying them 20, 25% more than they were. And we've turned a really terrific producer into a poor one. So what do we do? I'm not going to get into that today, but but uh, we may find that one out of 10, one out of 20 just is so naturally anxious that the level of challenge that we're, 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 we're identifying is just too much and they weed themselves. They just say, you know, I'm out of here. Um, another group that will will come to fore are people who basically are, you know, charmers, they'll snake old salesmen, con artists, they'll tell you what you want to hear, they look good, they sound good, they're charmers, but the truth of the matter is they're trying to get ahead without doing anything. And they tend to be kind of political. Um, they're more about how do I get power and credit for doing stuff I really didn't do than actually the substance of the matter and taking pride and in, in sticking to the path and so forth. Uh, these people see um, influence as a happy byproduct of achievement. These people are saying no uh, power is to be had and, and, and swiped any way you can get it. So these kinds of people 
uh, gets smoked out in a numbers everywhere, no place to hide. Here's the vision. Here's the path. Let's all get on it and get our oars in the water uh, kind of level of tension. So that's a, a model to think about. Thank you.